Hi friend, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. I hope you've been enjoying the summer comeback lately. And um, well, for my part, I've not been so prepared that summer would come back. So I was like kind of thrown off because I was already going into autumn in my head. And now I was taking out of that, slammed out of that. And now I'm back to summer mood. Um, but nevertheless, I've been really diving into my sewing and knitting plans for autumn and winter 2023. And that kind of built the momentum for the upcoming weather and season change. That has really made me excited about autumn. I don't know about winter, but it has made me excited about autumn, okay? And um, yeah, and I wanted to share also with you some trends that I've seen along the way and that can be um, translated into sewing or knitting projects as well. So if you're interested, stay tuned and yeah, fully watch the video, follow along and be inspired. I hope this helps you to find items that you want to make. Well, I am really excited and I hope you will be just as excited as I am. So yeah, let's dive straight into it. Well, um, my tip for every maker or every intentional maker would be look at what you have in your wardrobe. What do you have and what don't you have and what do you need? And that's what I did. I looked at my wardrobe and I figured that I'm in lack of some basics, okay? Basics that can be layered, basics that are a base for your outfit, basically. <laughs> And um, I figured this would be a shirt, a plain shirt that can be a white shirt, that can be a blue and white striped shirt. Um, very elegant, very timeless. And I feel I need that. So I looked at the patterns that I could use for that. And I stumbled over the Vicky So Cynthia shirt pattern. And it is a really simple and timeless cut. That's what really drew me towards the pattern because it's intentionally very oversized. Even if you're not going for that oversized look, you can still size down and you can get a really nice structured shirt. And that's what I, that's what I really needed. So I purchased the pattern. I'm really excited and this is definitely on my makers list. I still need some fabric. I haven't found the right fabric or I haven't had the right fabric in my stash, but I'm going to go for a white, very simple poplin cotton and a white and blue striped poplin. So I would be really excited if I find that fabric, but I don't think that it's going to be any other great problem because it's really generic and easy to find. Okay. But that's about the shirts and next to jackets. I know that was a huge jump into jackets. Um, yeah, jackets in general. I feel like I don't have enough jackets that fit my style currently. And I need jackets. I need coats. So a bomber ja jacket would be nice. A black simple bomber jacket maybe with a pop of color in the lining i like that so much i don't know it's just the silkiness or the satin finish of the outer shell and i don't know i really like that look and i don't know if i'm going to make it because i haven't found the right fabric for bom bomber jacket for some reason um, I can't find it and um, that's really frustrating and probably a reason why I'm not going to be making a bomber jacket anytime soon because I really want a fabric that is like nylon, a nylon fabric with a satin finish and I feel I can't get that. So what's the point? I don't know. But yeah, I will probably put that on hold as a make for now and look into finding um, a jacket that I can get ready to wear. 
um, a good quality jacket because bomber jackets I feel like are kind of timeless. You can wear them all, all the time and they are such a great staple and layering piece as well. So I'm going to have my eye out for that. And secondly, I have been eyeing the perfect trench coat for so long now. The perfect long maxi trench coat. I don't know. I don't know why I haven't gotten it till now, but I need to get it. Either I have to make it ASAP or I have to get it ready to wear. I don't know if I have enough time to make a full blown coat, but that's a challenge that I actually want to put on myself. I have never made a coat or a jacket before, and that will be such a cool thing to make something like to make outer wear. <laughs> I like that. I like the thought to make my own outwear. So I will have my eyes out for the perfect fabric. And I've already seen some fabric that would be great for a trench coat. And I've already seen um, nice patterns. Um, I've seen some free patterns by Mood Fabrics. I've also seen a nice pattern that would go really well as a trench coat on Vicky So's um, website. And yeah, I think they're pretty, like they're really good trench coat patterns out there. And um, I will definitely be linking the ones that I found down below. And um, yeah, apart from that, I feel like a good trench coat, a good bomber jacket, that's perfect. That's all you need in the autumn season. And like as a transitional jacket, jackets or coats, into like the deep winter. So up next for me are cardigans and sweaters. As you probably know, I this year I started my knitting journey, like my proper knitting journey, and I've never looked back since. I'm so, so glad that I took up this new challenge. Um, it's been so rewarding and it's been so refreshing to learn something new, to get better at something and to just you know, spread my wings in different territory. And I feel like this has helped me so much to connect with the colder seasons of a year. And um, yeah, it's made it so cozy and nice and just enjoyable to, you know, live in the colder months of the year. And um, yeah, it's been such a cool journey. I've knitted probably three full projects right now. I've been obsessed with knitting cardigans. I've just finished my second cardigan, which is the cardigan number seven by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Um, I haven't shared it yet, but I probably will in my knitting and sewing podcast. But yeah, for now, like I'm obsessed with knitting and I will definitely be knitting more sweaters. Um, and I figured I need some basic sweaters, like a black one would be nice. Um, a black, I was thinking of making maybe a cardigan, a black cardigan, really simple, versatile to just throw on. And um, I don't have a pattern for the cardigan, but I have a, a pattern for the sweater that I want to make, which is the Salty Day sweater by Kutuba Kika. <laughs> She's so cute. I like her very much. She's like very, I don't know. I don't know her, but she, she seems very likable, very friendly, and just has a very positive spirit, which I love. Uh, and she has a pattern uh, out, including a video. And since I've never really knitted a sweater or cardigan or anything with different knitting stitches, um, I figured having a tutorial, a video tutorial alongside of the written pattern would be the best next step for me. And the Salty Day sweater looks like the perfect sweater for that. And I love the pattern. It's just so, so, so cute. Um, the, the, the different textures um, and kind of reminds me a little bit of the... Ingrid sweater a little bit, not really, but a little bit, but 
yeah, um, for some reason I wanted to make the salty day sweater and I'm really excited about that. So I've been browsing around on the internet to get the yarn for the salty day sweater, but for some reason I couldn't till now settle on a color or settle on a yarn in general. If I wanted to use like a fuzzier fiber um, or not, or a bright color or a muted down color. And I was going between, in between back and forth, back and forth. But the longer I went back and forth, I was kind of going into the bright colored direction. Although I had said after my Cardi number no. seven, which I knitted in a bright fuchsia pink, <laughs> I will no longer be knitting anything in a bright color anytime soon. I was gravitating to this really bright green, green for some reason. I don't know why, but I feel like I should probably listen to my instincts and knit the sweater in the bright green as I feel just go with my feelings right there and maybe that's just what I crave color and I should just feed that craving <laughs> and I will knit it in a green yarn that's what I just decided well I've put it out there so I should probably do it so green it is I guess but really cool. I'm excited. I'm excited about the color and I'm excited to knit something new and to learn something new. And with the help of her tutorial, of her video tutorial, I feel so safe and I feel like I can do this. So if anyone is actually struggling or having the same struggles as I am, you've never knitting, knitted something with different stitches, um, and like something more intricate. I think this would be such a cool opportunity to do that. And um, I will definitely um, be reviewing how I found the experience. And especially, I haven't talked about this, but I'm going on vacation. I'm going to be going to Denmark for the first time. And I'm so excited because it's probably going to be a project that I'm going to take along. And um, yeah, it's a northern country. It's um, really different for me. It's a different kind of vacationing for me. And I have momentum for the colder weather and um, taking my knitting stuff along, my sewing stuff along and just romanticizing my my time with family and with my husband um yeah in this in this cute cottage and yeah just knit away and create and enjoy the quiet enjoy <laughs> probably i'm going to go out fishing who knows i don't know but it's such a different way to vacation for me and this, this is what i meant earlier with knitting helps me to really build momentum for the colder weather and yeah I'm really looking forward to it and I will probably be sharing some snippets of that so watch out and um, keep your eye on this channel and yeah as I'm saying it just subscribe if you are liking the video up till now and yeah let me continue with my plans and as we are still talking about fibers and uh, knits I would just segue into the little knickknacks that I wanted to crochet and I will just everything that I mentioned I will probably show you in picture or put it into the screen um, so you can see what I'm talking about but um, I saw this little teddy bear bears or this I don't know how they are called really but they're like crochet um, like soft toys like little teddy bears that children little babies and toddlers and kids can like snuggle with and I saw these um, because my mother-in-law she crocheted some of them because there are a lot of um, children around and little babies on their way so um, I saw them and I was so inspired they're so so cute and I was like oh my god the 
opportunities are endless and if you're like me having a lot of people around you that are having babies having little little children that's such a cool christmas present um, that you can be working on if you don't have anything to work on in between projects um yeah and i decided to make some of them for the people around me i think that will be so so cute and um, there are a few free patterns out there and i will definitely be linking some of them um, down below as well so if you're interested you can look out for them i know i know i know probably very over ambitious but i still have one further project knit project that I would love to share with you guys, which is the sweater number 26 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I saw this sweater on Instagram and I was immediately intrigued. I was immediately, oh my God, this is so cool. I love this pattern. I need to make it. I need to make it. And to be honest, that's not top of my priority because it's like, very plain and very simple it's very plain stockinette through and through uh, apart from the ribbing but it looks so cool i love the shoulder detail and it's something that kind of drew me towards the pattern it's so simple but it's it's so stylish at the same time so if i still have some room in between i might make this pattern i don't know about this year but I'm really seriously considering making this, yeah, just to throw that in. So that's that on the knit and crochet department for now. And I will segue into upcycling projects. I don't know about you, but I've seen this shirt t-shirt and shirt dress all over Pinterest. Not all over, but I've seen it pop up here and there. And it really grabbed my attention right away. It's so simple, but it's such a fashion forward piece. Like if you make it as a dress or just a plain t-shirt, it looks good. Throw on a pair of jeans, some loafers or flats or sneakers. It always looks good. It's a great layering piece. You can't go wrong with that. And that's what I actually need and want in my wardrobe really stylish and fashion forward pieces that are easy to combine that are still at the same time basic and yeah leaves you looking great <laughs> every time you wear them so i think this is such a easy upcycling project that you can just do with uh either an oversized t-shirt that you already own or you can thrift an oversized t-shirt of any color choice and you can just put in this shearing um, detail on it there are so many shearing tutorials on here you can look that up and just shear away on the t-shirt however shapes you want on there and i think if you do like different shapes that could look really interesting too so I think that's something I would definitely do um, this season. It's just a, it's such a quick project as well. For the dress, you can take very simple silhouettes, very boxy silhouettes. Um, maybe you have a pattern that is quite boxy and quite oversized and you can just elongate the dress if you want it a little bit longer and add the shearing detail on it and it's just, it just hugs you and in the right places and i think to do the shearing you definitely have to add like add some more width to your pattern so that the shearing can really shine um and um yeah you just take the pattern and spread the pattern and then you have the width that you need to actually uh, achieve the perfect gathers for your dress so yeah also a project I have my eyes on and it's so easy to do, I think, and you look stunning. To the second project, upcycling project that I have, the second and the last up upcycling project is these, I don't know how 
their color. They look really, the first time that I saw them, they look really weird. They're like, it's a very interesting silhouette. It's an interesting shape. I've never seen this before, but it looks so cool. I like that. And that's what I mean with passion forward, but simple and easy to combine and style. And um, yeah, I've, I'm looking at the Citizens of Humanity jeans and they look really intriguing. I really love the look. I think they're really easy, relatively easy to um, replicate. You can also use two tones uh, of jeans and combine them. You can, um, I think either way, you, how you do it, it's always very, very cool. And for me, I think I'm going to go for the denim look um, and I will try and find um, denim that is pretty close in color or like slightly different shades of uh, jeans and will combine them but I haven't really found the right um, jeans to make it but I haven't also been searching so that's something I would definitely have my eye on when next I go thrifting and um, yeah I love them I love how they look and I think that's such a cool thing to implement in your wardrobe. So now to the trends, the, the really cool stuff. And I wanted to like just talk about a few trends I've seen here and there and trends that we will be seeing more and more of. And uh, the first thing I am noticing and I'm seeing bright colored socks and tights. I think that's such a cool way to spice up your outfit and the pop of color or the, the different um, textures. You can also use like lace, lacy socks or tights. I've seen that a lot as well. And it's so cool. It's just a minimal thing that you can use to really make your look stand out. And um, I might be going shopping and looking for tights that, you know, I never wear tights, to be honest. I never do wear tights, but looking at these tights I'm seeing, it's like, hmm, that's actually really cool. I would like that. I have some dresses that I want to wear in the winter as well. So cool tights, nice tights, um, bright colored tights might be the way to go for me. So I will be on the hunt for some cool tights and socks. Yeah, I think Uniqlo has bright colored socks as well. And we'll go into Uniqlo and see what I can find. What we've also been seeing um, even, in, even in the last year, winter of last year, is colored shirts and like colored shirts and sweaters, like polo shirts and stuff. And uh, I think it's going to be and remain a trend for some time because they're really cool. You can just throw them on. I think that's a really cool sewing project you can do as well. You can, you can sew or you can even do a polo neck dress. I've seen a pattern from Vicky Sews as well. I don't know why I always uh, mention Vicky Sews, but that's the patterns I'm really like familiar with because I do browse on their website once in a while and I see those patterns and yeah, like colored sweaters, colored sweatshirts. Um, I think that's something that we will be still seeing in the upcoming autumn and winter. Moving on to funky accessories like chunky jewelry, funky necklaces we I think um, I don't know if we're moving away from um, the daintier necklaces or jewelry but what I've been seeing is like very very strong accessories and big necklaces big earrings and stuff I've been seeing that a lot and I don't know I I don't know if I'm going to be partaking in in that trend so much. As to jewelry, um, I'm trying to stick with what I have and what I know and what I like. And if I see like really pretty ch chunky jewelry, I might consider and I might get that um, to just have some fun with my outfit. But I, I'm good. I'm good, I think. 
I'm trying to be minimal and not get like everything. I'm really trying to be mindful of the stuff I get and I don't want to just trend hop. But if you like big stuff, like big earrings, big, 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 I think that would be a really cool way to spice up your outfit. So um, also bags, funky bags, bright colored bags, whether big or small, I think we're also going more into the bigger bags uh, this year, go away from the micro bags, but you can easily upcycle or sew a bag. I did sew a bag, which I've been wearing to death lately, and I'm going to show you in a second, but it is the origami bag by... I don't know the name, but I'm going to put it into the video because I just forgot. <laughs> um, and I think funky bag can mean like different things to different people, okay? With funky bags, I mean like funky colors, maybe a bright green or a bright, bright colors. I think bright colors for accessories are also the way to go. This is the bag that I made and it's made from a fabric that I got from my sister-in-law. She went to Gambia and she brought me this fabric and I really, I'm really loving it because it's such a cool accessory to throw on. Um, it was so easy to make and it literally goes with almost every outfit. I kid you not. It doesn't look like it, but I kid you not, this goes with so, much, so many outfits and I have been wearing this every at every opportunity that I've got. Um, yeah, we'll definitely be hanging around with this, with, with this bag a lot, but you can do that too. Like you can just easily use up your scraps if you have like funky fabric or like a cool fabric that you really love and you want to incorporate it, you can do that too. You can even make a patchwork project out of it. Like the opportunities are endless. So um, if you want to do that, you can easily do that. Um, yeah, and finally, <laughs> um, and finally, I think that maxi dresses and skirts are here to stay for a while. I've been seeing them, I've been wearing them. I love me a good maxi dress. I love me a good maxi skirt. They're so comfortable. They're so, you know, they give you like kind of an edge. I love that. And you can just throw on some funky sneakers or like flats or whatever, ballet flats. If you're into ballet flats, you can put them on with ballet flats and cool tights um, or socks uh, for the upcoming colder months but yeah long dresses it, it is puffy sleeves we're still here for puffy sleeves I know I feel like this trend has been around for such a long time but I also feel like it's still here to stay for a longer while so yeah that's it from my side um, I've shared all of basically all of the things that I want to make and things that inspire me to make and um, I hope you had fun watching this video and you could get some inspiration from it. Thank you so much for watching up to this point and if you enjoyed this video make sure to click the like button down below and subscribe to my channel. It will really help me and motivate me to make even more videos and if you have any suggestions for videos you want me to make or something you're curious about, just feel free to ask in the comment section below and I will do my best to answer and to make that become reality. And up until then, see you on the next video and stay blessed and stay beautiful as always. Bye.